I want to welcome you to the service this morning and a special welcome to those joining us uh, on Facebook Live this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, the Boy Scouts are having their annual yard sale uh, Saturday, May 7th from sunrise until noon. And if you have anything you'd like to donate, you can drop that off Friday, May 6th after 5 p.m. And uh, if you need assistance hauling larger items, uh, you can get a hold of Dave Quebedo. His number's in the bulletin. Uh, Sunday morning refreshments. We're in need of Sunday morning refreshments, especially Cheetos. So there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you're interested in contributing to that. Uh, the Rector's Forum. Uh, Father Glenn will be meeting uh, next Sunday, May 1st at 9.15 a.m. to discuss Kate Bowler's book, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved. So please join us for that. Uh, Augusta Green Jackets. There's 20 tickets for the church outing to the Augusta Green Jacket game on Tuesday, May 24th at 7 p.m. So if you're interested, see Father Glenn to sign up for tickets for that. Those tickets are free. The youth bowling event originally scheduled for tonight has been rescheduled for May 15th. And the book club will be meeting Wednesday, May 11th at 10 a.m. right here at the church. This uh, book for May is The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diefenbach. If you have any questions, you can see Mary Kelly. Her contact information is also in the bulletin. And lastly, <coughs> Father Glenn <coughs> is looking for others to join him in serving a hot lunch to God's people at the master's table on Saturday, June 4th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And you can see Father Glenn to sign up for that. Uh, the rest of the details you can find in your bulletin. And uh, with that, please silence your cell phones and prepare your heart for worship. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. If you would join me in reading Psalm 150, the psalm shall be read responsibly by whole verse. Alleluia! Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent praise. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from the Revelation to John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, 
priest serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. up your hearts and hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the, twelve, the tw twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his side and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but be believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise
Please be seated. How about those acolytes? So dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you folks for a few minutes this morning about a great lesson from St. John's Good News and about being focused over there somewhere. So from the age of 17 until going off to college at the age of 20, I served as an enlisted United States Marine. I was not a steely-eyed killer, but I was a supply clerk trained to digitalize logistical information. I was also the driver for our battalion commander, a man named Lieutenant Colonel Larry Richards, who wore aviator glasses and always had a toothpick in his mouth and made me do the same. <laughs> I was his mini-me for a year in Japan. <clears throat> but my job at the time was to sit in front of these crude green machines, ancient computers, and to input the appropriate supply data. And one of the guys I served with, whose real name I still cannot remember to this day, was the Marine Corps version of a nerd. He had dropped out of college to join the Marines, and his mission was to update, program, and maintain these green machines. Again, I cannot remember his name, but I remember vividly what he looked like. When he was off duty, he had horn rimmed glasses, his hair was disheveled, his uniform rarely pressed, and his boots were not shined. You would not have seen him on a recruiting poster. But he was proficient at his job, so he was left alone, um, even with his lack of military bearing. He marched to the beat of his own drummer, and while I don't remember his name, I remember his nickname. We called him Quasar. Quasar. <laughs> we called him Quasar because he existed and lived in his own orbit and own universe. And he was a good guy, but he had out of focus eyes. So when you spoke to him, he never looked you directly in the eye. It wasn't that he was trying to avoid eye contact, but his eye simply just didn't focus the same as other people's. To him, he was looking directly at you, and you were looking directly at him, but it seemed as if his focus was elsewhere. His gaze, his focus, his attention always seemed to be over there somewhere. Well, in our gospel lesson from St. John this morning, we hear the Easter story in a nutshell. Jesus comes and stands in the midst of his people 2,022 years ago, and here at Holy Comforter, Episcopal Church, this branch of the Jesus movement this morning. And in the Greek language, this story is written as if it's taking place right here and right now. Like Thomas, we are called and moved to respond because things have changed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Evil, rage, injustice, suffering, and death have been sent packing. Standing in their midst and in our midst is the risen Jesus, who promises and delivers life, life that never ends, life now, life over death, and life after death to all people. This, <clears throat> this is the risen Lord. Ooh. This is the risen Lord who loves you and me and all humanity, <clears throat> the one who came and is coming to save and heal the world with a crazy love, a love strong enough to die, not because of you and me, but for you and me. This is the risen Lord who took all the ugliness of the world on himself on the cross. This is the one who dies so we might live and be people of life so the world might live. And there is the challenge, church, for those first followers of Jesus huddled in fear behind locked and closed doors and for you and for me. Because Jesus comes and stands in our midst, that means that we are called and led like Thomas to respond to what Jesus does for us. And we like a theology of glory. We like what the risen Jesus has to say about new life. We know that because the grave is empty, that the harsh and cold realities of life do not and will not have the last word. All is well and all will be made well. This is God's world. We believe that death is not the end but the beginning. And if God is for us, who or what can be against us? We like the fact that in the risen Jesus, there is always more. Hopelessness has ended. Life as it is never has the last word. The worst thing, because the grave is empty, because evil and empire are defeated, 
the worst thing is never the last thing. The pain of this life is temporary and fading. It is something that happens to us, but which doesn't have to own us or define us. Jesus can change a life at any moment. Because Christ is risen, there is always hope. The way things are or the way things have been is not the way things have to be. God can and does roll away the stone. Jesus bridges the gap between God and us on a cross with a love that is downwardly mobile. Our lives are not bound and shut down by the present, by fear and pain and evil and hardened hearts and stiff necks. We know through faith, by grace, in the risen Jesus, standing in our midst through the power of the Holy Spirit in the claiming waters of baptism and the full presence of Jesus in the bread and the wine, that hope is always alive, breathing life and fresh wind into our tired and weary souls and spirits. But because we're human, because our sin is often navel-gazing and centering on ourselves, because we focus on the me and not the we, we don't always like the risen Christ walking through the doors of our hearts and lives. We like what's comfortable, even if it's not always rooted in following Jesus. We don't always want the Holy Spirit prodding and leading us to do more for the kingdom of God and the people of God, especially those different or unlike us, those on the edges and margins, the beaten up and beaten down, those people Jesus hung out with, shared meal, meals with, and elevated to a place of equality. Jesus the Christ, raised from the dead by the power of God, Jesus came to save and heal the world. He is Lord and Savior. We hear that good news and we respond in awe on bended knee with humility and gratitude for God's amazing saving grace. This Jesus, risen, defeater of death, life himself and life itself, stands in our midst and he tells us we have no more room for excuses, for not becoming more like Jesus ourselves, not to be saved, but saturated by, marinating in, transformed and changed by the Holy Spirit in response to the fact that we believe and have faith that we are saved. So I ask you, what are your locked doors? Are there places in your life you're trying to keep Jesus out? Do you allow Jesus into your life but not share him with others? It's said that the average Episcopalian will share the gospel with one person in their entire life. There is a post-pandemic mission field outside those doors, especially of seekers and ex-evangelicals, not evangelicals, but ex-evangelicals, former evangelicals, who might not realize there is another way to be a Christian, a way to be rooted in Jesus without, without the heavy-handed, the rigid, and exclusive baggage. Do you allow Jesus to take the log out of your eye, yet still judge others for the splinter in their eye? Is there something you are hiding from Jesus? Is there some secret shame or guilt in your life? Do you smile on the outside but scream on the inside? Are you running from the past? Do you keep hoping for a better or different past? We will never have a better or changed past. But Jesus walks through those locked doors right here and right now to give us, to provide you a better today and tomorrow, a future filled with light and life and healing and grace and release and hope. Keeping Jesus out keeps the focus on the self. Jesus comes to welcome and embrace all. The love of Jesus is forgiving, expansive, and inclusive. And if anyone tells you otherwise, it ain't gospel. It's not good news. It's their fear that God might be more loving and gracious than they are. Jesus comes to breathe new life into the world so that we can tell others the story, so we can share the gospel with others, so we might serve others in practical ways, being used by God as ambassadors and witnesses, as the fragrance and aroma of the gospel, used by God to breathe new life into others. In our gospel this morning, Jesus initiates contact with Thomas. Jesus stands in front of Thomas, poking, prodding, leading. Jesus challenges Thomas and says to him, the same thing he says to us, I am alive, I am risen. You don't choose me, I call you, I choose you, I send you. Now, what will you do? Well, a lot of folks, like Thomas, simply make sure they're not there. If you choose not to follow Jesus, or if God doesn't have a place in your life, or if you think being a good person saves you, that always kind of amuses me when people say that. I'm like, well, 
How do you know if you've been good enough? How do, how do you know when you've arrived if being a good person is what saves you? Not that there's anything wrong with being a good person. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But if that's not an issue, then you'll be focused over there. Because following the crucified and risen Jesus means change. And that might mean God calling us away from a hiding place and an identity which depends not on Jesus as the place to find our identity, meaning, and purpose, but one which depends on the world, our self, our career, our stuff, our relationships, all that stuff which is temporary and vacuous, especially when everything else is stripped away, especially when life is stripped down to the bare studs. So the problem with all that being focused over there is in the end, it doesn't bring joy, meaning, compassion, a sense of being present and content in the moment. That's why for me, I am so passionate about the church being a place of intentional welcoming for all people, being part of a healthy, loving, affirming community of those who follow Jesus will help people find their identity in being a child of God and not over there somewhere. When we're busy being focused over there, it is then like Thomas, we say, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in his side, I will not believe. But Jesus says to Thomas and to you, do not be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus calls Thomas and you and me and the world to believe. That, in fact, is the theme of the Gospel of John. We can't prove what we believe because the opposite of faith is not searching, seeking, questioning, wrestling, or doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. All we can do is respond to the risen Jesus and place our faith and our trust in him, holding fast to our faith as we follow him, as we let go and let God, as we put skin on the love of God, washing feet and washing the dishes in and through daily, ordinary acts of kindness and service. So as I get ready to close, let me share this with you, that if you notice, the story never says that Thomas actually touches Jesus. It never says that. The words and presence of Jesus are enough. Jesus walks through closed doors and closed heart, and that's enough for Thomas. Thomas became a missionary to India, serving the untouchables, challenging the caste system by sharing and living out the message that in Jesus there are no untouchables. Jesus speaks, and Thomas blurts out one of the most profound confessions in Scripture, my Lord and my God, which means I live for you, Jesus. I follow you. You are my focus and the lens through which I view everything else. I find my identity in being your child. You, Jesus, move me from being focused over there to casting my eyes on you, to looking full in your wonderful face because you are the one who tells us, blessed, content are those who have not seen and have believed. So the good news for Thomas and the good news for us is that the story doesn't end there. Our being out of focus, the locked and closed doors will not keep Jesus out because God has the last word, and it's a word of hope and future and life. The hound from heaven seeks Thomas. That's what's so amazing about grace. Jesus moves Thomas from one place to another, from unbelief to belief, from death to life, from lack of focus to seeing clearly Jesus the Christ, the risen Lord and Savior of the world, of you and me. Jesus speaks, and Thomas is moved from over there back to his first love, to my Lord and my God. So may it be for us, for you, and for me, as we live out and share the good news in all we say and in all we do. Amen? Amen.
our Lord lives, for death has no more power over him. And so we, God's holy church, proclaim the resurrection, saying, Christ has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. God of life and gratitude and great joy, we thank you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. We especially give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, including Michael Shippen, for those celebrating anniversaries, including Dave and Julie Blake, George and Linda Morgan, and John and Jennifer Hudson. We give thanks giving for all of our outreach projects. On this day, we give thanks for Christ has risen. Lord, Honoring the gifts of God, the gifts of Christ's risen body may be wise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God. For Christ has risen. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, and for our brothers and sisters that death may have no more power over us. We especially pray for those in need of healing, including Mark Maxia, Michelle Hopper, Polly Kane, James Adams, Frank Harrison, and Jenny Fry. For those who are homebound, and for the safety of the, all those who serve abroad. For Christ is risen. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears for the departed. For Christ has risen. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprise belief of Peter and John. May we long to be God's sign of life in this world. For Christ has risen. Thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus the risen one and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, remembering to share the peace with those joining us online and from a safe and social distance, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace. love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful things always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us the everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, <laughs> broke it. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is done. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy drink and food of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive you as holy communion and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, all are welcome at God's table. We offer bread and wine. If you would like to receive, I will hand you the bread. If you want to receive from the common cup, go to the right. If you want to receive by tinction, just dipping the bread quickly into the wine and eating, um, you can do that. Or you can just receive the bread. Um, I'll leave that to your conscience. So the meal is prepared. Come and receive our Lord Jesus.
Please stand. <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, we honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, church, always remember how life, short life is, and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. Now go forth to live boldly as if death has no power over you, because it doesn't. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and re remain with you always. quickly before the dismissal my apologies I sent the acolytes too early so I, next time I'll send them with a the baseball signal but, um, so quickly um, so on Saturday May 7th our service at the master's table is full I'm still looking for four people four to five people for Saturday June 4th that's 10 to 12 30 we'll serve the hot lunch on um, Saturday June not, July 9th I have seven slots left uh, the next group we have a group going to the Green Jackets today, that's full. I have six tickets left for Tuesday, May 24th at 7 p.m. I'm also looking for four people to join me on Wednesday, May 4th at the master's table to serve the hot lunch from 10.30 to 12.30. It's a very well-oiled machine. Um, you get there at 10.30, you're done at 12.30, it's boom, boom, boom. But they treat the people with dignity and respect. They have a nice table to sit at, music, a, n music, a nice, hot, nutritious meal. Um, so it's really, it's, it's a great ministry. Next Sunday, the prayer team will stand up during worship. So after communion, if you want prayer, the prayer team will be waiting for you. Sunday, June 5th, we're going to have a birthday party for the church at Metzikos. And on Sunday, June 12th, Trinity Sunday, we're going to have a Celtic service.
Can I get the kids up here? Oh, be you. People to take lilies. Oh, please take Easter lilies. Thank you. Please take Easter lilies. <laughs> take them. Take all of them. All right. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Good job, guys.